need something to show up in the earth. And, th and I'm telling you, I believe it's going to, I'm, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but I, I believe, I wrote in my notes, I believe it's going to be the revelation of Jesus Christ in the people. The, sh the great rock is the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the thing that when Mary and Martha was in the house together, and Martha was covered about with many cares, and Mary, she got upset. She said, Jesus, why don't you tell old girl to get back over here with me? <laughs> and he told her, he said, no, 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 no. She had chosen the good part. Mm -hmm. yeah. She had chosen the pearl of great price. Mm -hmm. She chose that thing, mm -hmm. that rock, mm -hmm. that revelation that should not be taken from her. Yeah. Amen? Amen? She left from serving, doing things in the house of God, to sitting at his feet listening from his voice. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, that's what we need. She sat and listened to his word. He read it over there. It said, she sat under him and to listen to his word. In other words, the instruction that she was receiving from him. Yeah. Line upon line. Yeah. Precept yeah. upon precept. Yeah. Telling you, that's what we're going to have to get, y'all. Yes. That This is one line. Mm -hmm. Thank God for this line. Yeah. This instruction, this teaching, this impartation, this training. But then there's another line. It's line upon line. He didn't say line or precept. He said line upon line mm -hmm. twice. Mm -hmm. He said precept upon precept twice. Am I right? Here a little, there a little, twice. Mm -hmm. It's a double enunciation. That's all it was. So you're going out and you're going in. Coming to the house of God and your private life. I'm telling you. I, I'm not reading into it, but that's just something that the Spirit of God gave me. So it it's upon this rock, I'm telling you, God's going to build a church, an ecclesia, that's going to be built upon the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. It's going to be so personable that even the gates of hell won't be able to prevail against it. And that is what humanity is looking for. That's what verses 3 and 4 is waiting on. They're waiting on us to awaken to that identity. It's a place where the foundation of the true church is, is, is uh, signified and established that the enemy of the church would be overcome. The enemy of the church will be overcome. Not necessarily only being the devil that we have to fight with, but an unrenewed mind. Mm -hmm. That's why revelation is so important. The enemy is the enemy. The enemy, you know what I'm saying? The enemy is the enemy. Once the concepts, the precepts, the information I'm receiving is incorporated into my lifestyle, that's the end of me. That's the end of the enemy because it has to do with the inner me. So we got to understand this. Too many of us are building upon religious systems unknowingly. And we're esteeming and venerating things that's not of God. There are some practices done in the local church, even at this house, that are work, but not of his breath, his bone, his blood, and his body. So that's what flesh and bones, flesh and blood hasn't revealed to you. But I believe that his breath, his life source has to begin to flow through a people. And this is why it's so important for us to connect to the spirit of revelation. So that we can have a true understanding of his eternal purposes and his inclusion of a people that has been bought with the price that he may show forth his glory in the earth. I know you hear me saying these things, but I'm going to keep reiterating until I can see it in your life. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you can hear what I'm saying, since the incarnation of Christ as the redeemer of all humanity, we once again have an opportunity to reflect heaven accurately on earth by becoming a gate of access for God. Upon this rock, it's a gate, it's an access point for us to demonstrate the things that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. And it's up to us to position ourselves so that we can regulate the environment of the earth and make earth conducive for God and more. We're the salt of the earth, am I right? Light of the world, right? Yeah. So on is on who? The uh, devil? Uh, us. 
But we've legislated something that flesh and blood can't handle. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't come up by do's or don'ts. Yeah. Yes. It has to be binding by the Spirit of God. Yes. That is the only glue. Covenant. If you really want to know, I'm telling you, most of us don't even know anything about covenant. Covenant is, is, is the, I'm telling you, that is the glue. Mm -hmm. I believe that's going to give us the framework to become uh, that rock, to become that shadow in the earth. That, that, that we'll talk about in Ephesians, I mean, in uh, verse 3 and 4. Because we've been, something has been committed to our stewardship. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be what? Bound in heaven. Right? Mm -hmm. And whatsoever what? Thou loose on earth shall be mm -hmm. loosed in heaven. That's a legislative term. Yes. That's a kingship. I give you the ability to operate in the earth. Yeah. And whatever you deem necessary and unnecessary has to cease operation. Mm -hmm. And see, most of us have it in, the, in our mindset subliminally. And all we have it is the indoctrination. Well, that thing has to come alive on the inside mm -hmm. of you. The spirit of revelation come to you to come alive in you instantly. You'll know, say, no, I'm going to make a stand. I'm going to stand because the gates of hell should not prevail. In spite of the critic, in spite of, in spite of the pronosticators, the church that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a part of would not be changed. We would not be nullified. Our voice would not be silenced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, have to, you have to tell yourself that. You may not feel like what I'm saying tonight. You have to tell yourself, I will not be silenced. Yeah. I will say what Psalms 107 yeah. says. It says that the Redeemer of the Lord says so. Yeah. I know that my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I know I can write my destiny and my, you know what I'm saying, and my future. Yeah, no, no. I don't have to allow the circumstances to dictate my future. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a lying vanity. We have the keys. Mm -hmm. We can determine and we can confine and restrict what is legal and what is illegal in the earth. And it's up to us who the church, the ecclesia, we'll talk about it. I'm going to talk about the keys on another date, another time, because those keys are very important. Yes. And, and the real translation of whatsoever thou bound on earth is really what's already been bound in heaven. So that means you have to become a student of the Spirit to find out, and out of your relationship with God, then He'll tell you what's been bound. He'll tell you what to be loosed. That's why we don't have the fruit, because we think we can just bind and loose. We can't take that honor on ourselves. We have to be led by the Spirit of God. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, then we can start functioning from that dimension yeah. as we're led of God. I don't bind everything and lose everything. I used to in my immaturity. Like I said in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child, and I understood as a child, but when I became a man, a mature person, I put away childish things. And those are some of the childish things, some of the juvenile practices we have in the church. And then we get frustrated because it's not working. Yeah, God left me. No, he ain't left you. He just didn't lead you. He didn't tell you to do that. He's not a magic wand. You just can't twist his hand and tell him what he's going to do. Find out what his heart is. And what is my concerning you? Amen? Amen. So that's very important. The church is here to enforce and extend the kingdom of God. And most of us rather fight invisible things. And I understand it, but there are substructures that's been embedded in people's personalities. Mm -hmm. There has been some legal ramifications because of some activities that have been independent of God. It could be overt sin or it could be religious things. And we've done them. And it become a substitute to our relationship. Am I right? Yeah. So that's the first tier. The first tier is that upon this rock, then there's another level. If we're going to become the shadow of the rock, that first tier is that God is using the body of Christ as a corporate expression of the head, which is Christ himself. And it's an ongoing incarnation. He's filtering himself through the body, or he's manifesting himself through the body. But ultimately, not only will it be an entity in the earth to represent him, but there's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Go to Daniel 2. There's a force 
There's a momentum that's going to come to us. Yes. Amen. Not just an encounter. There's going to be an activation of that stone, that great rock. Yes. That nobody can get credit for. I love it. I'm telling you, I love it. Everybody thirsty for gifts, anointed to be seen. Oh, oh Lord, help us all out. It's all about him. I know that deep down in my soul, it's all about him. I got I I don't know if there's any hidden motives in me, but I, I, it, it should have been showing up by now. <laughs> I don't care anything else about, about him. Amen. Daniel, uh, I didn't give it 31. <coughs> this is a magnificent piece. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, had a dream and he wanted to get somebody to interpret. He went to all his musicians, mag musicians, magicians, soothsayers. They couldn't interpret it. So God had somebody that could interpret it. And his name was who? Daniel. Daniel. I know him. Daniel. And Daniel interpreted from head to toe. This image with gold at the top, when you get to the feet, bottom of the feet, four stages, they ain't got time tonight. Most dispensational believe that it's going to happen in the future. I believe the kingdom that's going to take over all the kingdom came into the earth when the Holy Spirit came. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. So I believe the fulfillment of Daniel started at that point. At the advent of the Holy Spirit amen. when he came. Amen? Amen. Remember, just say amen, you don't believe. Amen. Amen. But thank you. <laughs> Thou, O King. Some of y'all are like, I don't know about shit. Put all my eggs in that basket. That's a big basket. Oh, yeah. Thou, O King, saw it and behold a what? Great image. I told you, I ain't got time to start from the head with gold all the way down to the feet. This mixture's iron and clay. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. And by the way, that image was the image of a man. That a preacher you know, all by itself. The image of man. You look at the height, it's the image of man. 